Good afternoon, my name is Sherry Crazel. I am the Marketing Communications Coordinator here at the Miami University Art Museum. It's my pleasure to welcome you to episode four of our Noontime Chatter with MUAM staff and our special guest from the Hafner Museum today. Um, I wanna let everyone know that we will be recording this session as we like to post these on our YouTube channel uh, for further viewing uh, after the Noontime Chatter is complete. At this time, I would like to turn it over to the director of the Miami University Art Museum, Jack Green. Thank you, Sherry. Um, it's great to uh, be here. Um, it's wonderful to have you join us uh, from all over uh, for this Noontime Chatter, episode four. Um, so my name is Jack Green. I'm the Jeffrey Harrell 75 and Rodney Rose director and chief curator of the Miami University Art Museum. And I'm here to um, discuss with uh, Steve Sullivan, um, and who I'll be intru introducing in a moment, uh, this topic of Museums Miami. But before I begin, uh, I just want to first of all respectfully acknowledge the Shawnee and Miami people who, along with other Indigenous groups, were the first stewards of the land that this museum, the Miami University Art Museum and Miami University, uh, now occupies. Um, this is also the 50th anniversary of the relationship between the Miami tribe, uh, tribal nation of Oklahoma and Miami University. And the art museum uh, here has uh, a close relationship with the Miami Center at Miami University is engaged in a process of community curation in its exhibitions, programs, and collections connected to the Miami tribe. Um, but now I'd like to introduce um, Steve, Steve Sullivan, who is the director of the Hefner Museum of Natural History here at Miami University, and also the chair of Museums Miami Center. So I hand it over to you, Steve. Well, thank you, Jack. It's great to be a guest on, on this show today. And I am, as, as chair of the museum's Miami Center, I'm here to uh, try to represent all of the wonderful benefits that the museums on Miami and the other collecting institutions bring to our students and to our overall university and greater community. So today we'll talk about our diverse collections and the common goals that we all have to use those collections. So I like to refer to our museums as both literal and figurative jewels in the crown of Miami University. Uh, on this slide, I just want to introduce that concept that we have literal jewels in the form of Navajo jewelry, literal jewels in the form of uh, a, a specimen from the Limper Museum of Natural History. And, and like that Navajo jewelry, here's a, uh, a painting of a woman with uh, jewelry on from the Museum of, of Art from Miami's Museum of Art. And these, these both literal jewels in that they are specimens, figurative jewels, and maybe one's a painting, but also figurative jewels in that this is a, our, our museums and our collections are places where we can go to uh, learn and experience the intellectual and physical life of, of campus crossing all disciplines. And we're gonna really talk about those principles in detail as we go through our presentation today. I wanna start off by talking about Museums Miami's mission. We integrate and enhance Miami University's rich resources for the study and preservation of art, material culture, and natural history by connecting a broad range of departments and disciplines from across the university. The Museums Miami Center seeks to strengthen the role of museums collections objects and uh, object-based learning in the museum's educational, in the university's educational mission. Uh, spoken briefly, this simply means that Museums Miami is here to connect all disciplines. And here you can see that uh, on, on Oxford campus, we have a number of institutions. We will show you on the next slide. That there's uh, an institution also on the Hamilton campus. The important thing about these institutions is that Museums Miami helps cross disciplinary boundaries through using authentic objects, as well as being a touchstone to history and philosophy and some of these other intellectual principles that are represented by, uh, by those objects or, or by the concepts that we preserve um, for, throughout time. 
we present these ideas and objects uh, through customized tours for professors' classes, for community classes, as well as informal tours. We also have a lot of events including customized guest lectures. If you need uh, one of us to show up in your class and, and show how, say, natural history and art are tied directly together to a business principle, we can give you those kinds of resources um, and other kinds of learning activities that are customized to your class goals, whether it's worksheets to, uh, for students to complete at the museums that are tied into your class. Um, any number of specific learning object opportunities in our museums are available. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see, um, actually, before we, before we leave this slide, I, I want to highlight just, just briefly on the dots here. It's, it may be a little bit hard to see, um, but the, the collections that are here, uh, we will be addressing those in greater detail later on in the presentation. Uh, so then the next slide, uh, and this one shows the Hamilton Botanical Conservatory, which we will also address in detail in a moment. Um, but to continue with the theme of crossing disciplinary boundaries, uh, our museums and collections also do this through providing opportunities for scholarly research, as well as internships and capstone opportunities. So if you are uh, a professor, a postdoc, or, or as Miami is famous for, an undergraduate who wants to engage in specific scholarly research, those opportunities are available as well as training through internships or, or doing some of these cross-disciplinary capstone projects that are so important uh, in differentiating Miami students from their competition. Thank you, Steve. And I just wanted to add uh, just one thing that, um, as you saw in the map, and I think I'll just go back to the Oxford uh, campus map here with these particular dots and these uh, museums and galleries and collections, um, just a, a short disclaimer that this does not necessarily represent every single collection on the university campus or in Miami University, because we are aware that um, there are other collections that exist. Just a couple of examples. A few examples would be, for example, the public art collections that are across the campus. For example, the sculptures. We have a sculpture park at our art museum, but also there are these sculptures that are across the campus. There's also, um, for example, the anthropology collection, which is a departmental collection, which is not shown on this map, uh, but is also in Upham uh, Hall. There's uh, also the, the tree collection, which um, is in the process of becoming more formalized. So just to say that there are other collections out there and this isn't meant to be necessarily entirely comprehensive, but gives a good range of the different collections and the different centers within the Museum uh, Miami Center. If I just wanna go on to the next, um, I think Steve, you're going to speak to this topic of the student-driven exhibitions and research. Yeah, thanks for pointing out those, those other collections that are on campus. And it's really important to recognize that there is so much activity going on on campus that engages these kinds of, of resources. I was heartened um, last semester at the Natural History Museum, we had an Arabic poetry class come in to, to use our collections. And these things seem kind of incongruous, but ultimately they're very harmonious and really help students develop as, as scholars and diverse thinkers. To, in the same way, uh, we have many opportunities for things like student-driven exhibits and research. Uh, all of our institutions uh, provide practical training experience that ultimately result in resume lines that differentiate the Miami student from people at other schools that are pursuing the same degree. And our Miami students, as um, one of the students in this, in this picture recently told me, our key to standing out in the crowd and having the skills necessary to progress in their careers. Um, let's go to the, the next slide then. Looks like it's not quite, okay, there okay. we go. So in addition to uh, specific student training, uh, we have opportunities to engage with the community. And uh, if you've ever brought parents or friends to, to campus, uh, the museums are one place where you're going to want to go right off the bat. Because although lectures and, and classes are key to our everyday activities, people from outside campus 
maybe won't find those the most compelling thing to do while they're here for, for a, a half day visit. Um, additionally, visiting researchers, prospective students like crazy go through our institutions and, and we are one of the highlights for reasons that students want to be part of this university. And of course, our, our greater community. As a university, we have uh, outreach goals and our museums are, are key to fulfilling those goals and incorporating our community, uh, including teacher training as uh, field trips, as well as just casual visitors into understanding the greater world in ways that our museums represent. Oops, there we go. Uh, so yes, I just wanted to also mention Thank you, Steve, for that. It's very important to acknowledge, of course, the community aspect as well as the uh, student-centered focus of our museums. Um, one of the really important things about our museums and collections is that they can be visited and accessed, and that's a really important part of public collections. Um, we do our best to share information about those collections, but also provide scholarly access and also accessibility for teaching. Um, and so just an example here from the Art Museum, um, of course, it can also apply to other museums and collections that will be uh, highlighting in a moment. But uh, for example, we have students that come in regularly and access our physical in-person collection in terms of uh, prints and drawings and paintings and so forth that are from our stored collections. And in addition to that, um, we have some online collections too, so people can research and find out more about our collections online and each institution within Museums Miami Center has its own kind of system and approach to how you access that that information digitally. We're aware that not all of that data is yet available online but there are major efforts to make more of the collections accessible online to help facilitate that remote access help uh, faculty and also students and researchers uh, do work and preparations with our collections before they come and visit in person. So I just wanted to now go through, actually Steve and I will tag team through this in terms of the different institutions that make up the Museums Miami uh, Center. So I'm starting off of course with the Miami University Art Museum. Uh, where I'm speaking from now, also the Sculpture Park, which surrounds our building. So we have, uh, we've been open since 1978. We're an AAM, it's American Alliance of Museums accredited museum since 1984. We have over 17 and a half thousand objects and artworks in our collection, ranging from the most ancient, being sort of 5,000 year old pottery from Egypt, up to modern and contemporary works and paintings. Uh, one of the really uh, key works in our collection is Hans Hoffmann's Blue Spell, which you can see here, which is an abstract expressionist painting in our collection. So we really invite people to come and visit our museum. Uh, we do a lot in terms of, uh, of course, facilitation of training, uh, of, of teaching, uh, of students as a teaching collection. And also we really celebrate artistic diversity in terms of the global visual culture that we represent, as well as having a very strong um, emphasis on social justice too. So um, we invite you to come along to the museum and there's the website and the web links are in each of these um, slides. I'm now gonna hand it over to Steve for the next one. Another uh, example of, of our collections here is at the conservatory on Hamilton campus, the Botanical Conservatory. And here you can see the, the beautiful entrance and then two, two specimens of, of the thousands that are there. Important to this conservatory and the university's scholarly mission is these are not just cool looking plants that you can go visit and be amazed by, although I encourage you to do simply that, is these are documented specimens from specific places and specific times representing important species from both pedagogical and conservation standpoint. Uh, so the Hamilton campus is, is certainly worth a visit. Great, now back over to me and I'm just gonna quickly touch on the He Stand galleries, um, which are in He Stand Hall. So really right in the heart of campus. Um, the He Stand galleries uh, provide opportunities for presentations mostly of contemporary art, um, 
and in particular are the venues for displaying the uh, YEC um, Young Painters uh, competition, um, as well as the YEC Young Sculptures, Com Sculptures competition each year. So across two galleries in East Stand Hall, as well as being venues for the MFA um, and the BFA uh, uh, students for showing their work. In addition, there are opportunities there to see the work of Miami University um, Department of Art faculty members, artists who are showcasing their work too. So if you haven't had a chance to go and visit, I really urge you to, there's a great uh, exhibition on right now. Um, and that's open, I believe it's Monday to Friday during the semesters. So um, please do go and check it out. M many of our galleries like the Easton Gallery have changing exhibits. And so visiting them several times a semester can be uh, a, a real treat. Um, Similarly, the Carl Limper Geology Museum in Scheidler Hall has a beautiful exhibit uh, on the outside that you can see as you walk past quickly, maybe to another meeting, but it's definitely worth going into uh, because this is, a, this is a museum that focuses, as you can see in, in these pictures relatively clearly, on these beautiful gem-like gem uh, minerals. Um, and then inside, it also talks about paleontology, plate tectonics, the earth we live on, and using authentic specimens, exhibits, and uh, the perennial favorite, which is the globe here, um, which pro tip, there's a, a Death Star mode if you want to explore that. Uh, but also showing things like how the continents moved over ages and looking at specimens of, of fossils and minerals that were found right here in Ohio, as well as those found on similar places, but on completely other continents that are so beautiful to look at, but also so important to learn from. Thank you, Steve. And thanks for making that reference to the Death Star, because it is, of course, International Star Wars Day today being May the 4th. So thank you so much for that. Um, I also wanted to highlight here the Walter Havighurst Special Collections um, and the University Archives, which are in the King Library on campus. And this is by far the largest of the um, collecting institutions within Museums Miami Center. Um, there are countless archives here. I think that the getting close to 100,000 in terms of actual physical items, rare books, uh, postcard collection, um, documents and archives. Um, very strong on Ohio history, of course, the Miami University history itself and Oxford um, local regional history. Um, there's also uh, very important archives that relate to the Western College for Women campus um, and the Western College for Women Alumni Association, which are, are here, um, including uh, documents related to Freedom Summer 64, um, which took place on the Western College uh, campus. Uh, there are, in addition, many digital objects that are accessible in this collection. And you should go to the website and you can search online for um, many digital images and access to those objects uh, online too. So I think we're talking about hundreds of thousands of objects overall. There's also a very strong area within uh, Russian history in uh, relations to, to Russia with the Havikhurst uh, collections too. So please go to the King Library and the Special Collections website to find out more about that. Hang on a sec, let me see, advance the slide. Okay, there we go. Oh, and now it's again, it's, it's me again. I'm gonna just quickly mention uh, Williams Holmes McGuffey House and Museum, uh, which is a sister institution also of the Miami University Art Museum. So this is a very special building historically uh, to Miami University. It was built in 1833, so it's, a, it's on the historic register, and it was built by William Holmes McGuffey, who was the originator and publisher of the uh, McGuffey Eclectic Readers, which were kind of almost like, uh, there were important educational tools in the 19th century and became vastly popular um, uh, around the United States and, and further afield. And so that Many of these were actually written and composed within uh, this building and also around this octagonal table that you can see here that's in the building. So as a historic house, this 
This building preserves the memory and the history of William Holmes McGuffey, but also it is in a sense, um, the history of, of Miami University. And so many of the people who were involved uh, and are alumni of the McGuffey School, and of course, the educational role of um, McGuffey in terms of continuation, in terms of educational legacy here at Miami University, in terms of the training that has continued. Um, this is an important place for that too, as well as just generally alumni and people coming back and engaging with this important history. And you can check out more and visit uh, between Thursday, I think Thursdays to Saturdays are the opening days between 1 and 5 uh, p.m. Over to you, Steve. Is the slide loaded completely? I see just a fraction. Of it. Uh, maybe there's a lag on your side. Let me see if I can. There you we see. go. Perfect. Now I got it. Barium. So the Terrell Herbarium is uh, an amazing space. Uh, if we're if we're comparing all of these places to the jewel of the in the crown of Miami, this might be the the band that supports it because it it's a little bit hidden. It's a little bit. Um, quiet or overshadowed by some of these other spaces, yet it is equally important. And that's because the, the herbarium is a collection of plants, and these are empirical data about what has been in Ohio and around the world and how ecologies are changing. So this is a very obvious space that, that touches on every discipline as, as we look at the foundations of agriculture and business and things like climate change. Um, and this collection is the largest herbarium in the entire state of Ohio. Uh, it is searchable online, as you see here with the, uh, this online database, which you can access at the uh, URL below. And uh, even though the specimens might seem innocuous, just a plant pressed on a piece of paper, these are such important things for helping us understand the past, interpret the present, and predict the future. Thank you, Steve. And now going back to the arts, and um, this is the Cage Gallery, which is in Alumni Hall. And maybe many of people watching may not have heard of the Cage Gallery or haven't been to visit it. Um, it's, it's called the Cage Gallery because it's in a cage. Um, there you can see the cage screen here. It's in the, in the lower level of Alumni Hall. And it relates uh, to the Department of Architecture and Interior Design. Uh, so it's the activities of the students and also the faculty um, of um, architecture and interior design. So you can see changing exhibitions, sort of showcases of the works of the students. Um, the exhibitions are somewhat more sporadic and spontaneous, so you have to really go there and, and keep, see the changes. You can also keep up with uh, information about what's going on in terms of public events with talks uh, if you look at the website of uh, architects for example that could be connected to this so just go go online and check out and go in person to see this very interesting and diverse work of the um, of the department of architecture and interior design and lastly here we have last but not least the uh, patterson place museum which is on the western campus and we call the western campus that's the original campus of the western college for women uh, which is now part of Miami University. So this is really the historical um, sort of uh, point of for all of the collections that relate to uh, the Western College, uh, the people that have been connected with it, uh, the history of the Western College Alumni Association as well. So um, this particular building, uh, you can visit it right now, but it's actually going to be it's only going to be open for another year so if you want to go there please go there within the next year because it's um, not going to be open after June uh, 2023 so um, uh, but nevertheless very important collections and um, I'm aware that the Western College uh, Alumni Association archives are going into the um, uh, King Library and their special collections there now over to you, Steve. Jack, if we can jump back up a slide. Oh, yeah. I think we skipped that as we were uh, describing everything. Which one were you looking for? Slide 14, that'd be the Hefner Museum. 
Oh, that Hefner yeah, Museum. To notice that oh, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Must have skipped over that one. Sorry. And, <laughs> and actually, this this highlights one of the facts that Miami University is is a really great university simply because we have such diversity of collections and institutions. And and if if uh, because of being skipped, I can I can take the place of last but not least to represent that fact. That here you see. Um, antelopes and a, and a charismatic uh, Kodiak bear and a student putting together a, a, a coyote skeleton here. Um, and so very clearly, this is a natural history museum. It was founded uh, officially in the mid 1900s, but some of our earliest specimens come from the mid 1800s. And importantly, in a natural history museum, we involve obviously a lot of science as we talk about biology and natural history, but also a lot of art as we uh, create these specimens and, and preserve the specimens. And, and also uh, disciplines such as English to simply be able to write effective labels. All of our institutions do this, but uh, perhaps we can use that to the, the museum slide here to exemplify that, that we cross all of these disciplinary boundaries. And so regardless of if you're a, a professor or a student looking for ways to enliven your class or make these cross-disciplinary boundaries, these institutions that Jack and I have talked about today are here for you, both as places that you can visit, but also places that can loan you um, expertise or objects to, to supplement your classroom teaching and, and other learning opportunities. So with that, let's, um, let's move on to uh, some of the discussions of our online work. Um, Jack, did you wanna talk about this part? Sure, thank you so much, Steve. So um, this is just a, a link to our website, the Museums Miami Center website. And it's got basic information there about all of the institutions and collections that we've just been discussing. So you can go there and you can link to those um, different institutions. Um, again, this is showing it as collecting units. We're aware that some um, are not necessarily collecting units more to display galleries, but um, I think it's important to highlight this. This isn't all of them, but you can take a look there and you can also see some more information here about the uh, community partners, the Oxford Museum Association, and also the Smith Library of Regional History is uh, linked to uh, on this website too. And this website is in development. We're working on ways to add more content and information about the collections and about what we have to offer. Um, Steve, do you want to mention the uh, su support units? So much as we have many collections and exhibits across campus, we also have many uh, units that specifically use those uh, or partner with us in developing those. And this is a what we might say is a foundational list, but certainly as other relationships and opportunities develop, we will be adding to this list. Um, as Jack mentioned earlier, this is the, the 50th year of the university's partnership with the Miami Center, and we're really pleased to be able to work with them to uh, be a part of getting out that Miami message. Similarly with the Humanities Center and all of the uh, dynamic programs that they host, we work with the Center for Digital Scholarship the College of Engineering and Computing, as well as Geospatial Analysis Center and the Emerging Technology and Business and, and Design Center. And I think these support units um, help highlight the fact that Museums Miami is a, is a hub for cross-disciplinary interactions. Great. Um, and I'll just speak to this, uh, the Museums and Society Minor. So although Miami University doesn't have a museum studies program the closest that we have to it is the museums and society minor where you can gain uh, credit hours and we have a number of we have three main courses classes involved with that so there's the cca 222 that's college of creative arts um, and that's museums and collections beyond the curio cabinet uh, we also have uh, cca 232 museums today content practices and audiences um, and we have IMS 203 scholarship in the digital age. And there's also, um, of course, there's CCA 340 experiential learning, which ties into uh, the different museums as well and museum education. So you can gain these credit hours and it's a great way. We have students from across the different disciplines uh, who come and 
um, learn about museums and collections through these courses. Um, I believe, Steve, you're um, you're involved with teaching the Beyond the Curio cabinet, uh, and and we have our own uh, Laura Stewart uh, at the art museum or collections manager registrar who's uh, teaching the museums today and also the administrator of the museums and society minor. Um, Steve, did you want to have anything to add about the uh, opportunity to study uh, in relation to museums on campus? One, one thing I love about the, the minor in particular, but also all of the opportunities that we have on campus is students who are graduate who have graduated occasionally will text me with a particular nuanced question and say, you know, I know I learned this in your class and here's a particular ex example of, of how I've used it or fill me in on, on some more readings that I can do. And it's wonderful to see the students who um, can engage in such dynamic learning through this minor and then go and apply it in, in specific and amazing ways. Absolutely. And I'll also add that there are many internship opportunities that can kind of come out of this. So, you know, by just being involved with museums, it's like that can open doors to other opportunities uh, that could be available for internships and, and uh, working in the museums. Absolutely. And just lastly, I just wanted to touch on one item here, which is a recent event that took place here and also in our uh, in a number of different museums on the campus. It's called Museums Career Trek. And this was uh, coordinated by Michelle Vasky of our Center for Career Exploration and Success at Miami University. And it was a great opportunity for students to come and find out more about careers in museums, uh, learning from some of the uh, directors of the center. You can see here of the different centers. We have, for example, seated at the table here, Anne Tolby, who's the director of the He Stand Galleries, myself, Steve uh, for Hefner, and also Stephen Gordon, who's the administrator for the McGuffey uh, House Museum, House and Museum. So that was a really great day, and we're hoping we can do more like that to help people connect with museums and to think about future careers in museums. And lastly, I hand it over to Steve. So you can get involved regardless of who you are or where you're at in your education or what your specific educational goals are, you can get involved in, at the museums. At the very least, come enjoy the museums, bring a friend with you. Um, at, many of us have places where you can simply sit and contemplate the world uh, or even just a nice quiet place to study. Uh, of equal importance, we put on a lot of events. Uh, we bring in some amazing famous people and uh, so we encourage you to attend those events as, as an ongoing part of your education and, and as well as um, a fun recreational opportunity. We've talked a bit uh, about being a volunteer or an intern or using the collections in capstone or other research projects. Uh, you will be able to gain fundamental uh, hands-on experience through these kinds of opportunities in our collections. And these are the things that are going to, going to really uh, differentiate Miami students from everybody else and things that enliven classes and make them more than just lectures because of course we learn not just with our ears but with our eyes and our hands as we interact with these objects. Um, and if, uh, if we haven't touched on exactly your question today, we encourage you to come contact us, stop by my, my office, Jack's office, and see how we can work with you. Great, thank you so much, Steve. And I think we have time for some questions. Sherry, do you have any questions from the chat? Yeah, I do. Um, one of the questions we received is, does Miami have a film archive? That is a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, Steve, do you know the answer to that? So I know that um, some of the staff at the King Library are working on a variety of, of moving picture and, and other um, film-based preservation projects. I don't know the status of that, uh, but um, I know that it involves students and that this is an opportunity to develop those kinds of skills as well as create uh, more content for our film archives. Mm -hmm. It also makes me aware or acutely aware of the digital um, shift that's going on. Of course, there's original film, there's VHS and all those sorts of things, but also thinking about time-based media in general and how 
um, digital assets are becoming increasingly important in terms of storage and also making accessible online. So um, I, I know that there are, yeah, as you mentioned, Steve, with King Library, there's also a department uh, related to that teaches film studies. I think it's within the communications um, part of the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm not sure if they have um, films as part of their departmental archive. That would be kind of interesting to know. Great question. Um, and then I had someone wondering if both of you could share um, perhaps a favorite item uh, from a collection here at Miami. Steve, you can go first on that. Yeah, so um, one of my, the slide that I, that was up earlier about the Hefner Museum, it's one of our newest specimens, but it's a really neat specimen um, because this is a, a, a local coyote, it's a roadkill coyote, um, that has all sorts of skeletal problems as a result of being an, a, a, a somewhat urbanized animal. Um, so it's been amazing to look at that and sort of see this non-human animal's story uh, preserved in its bones. And the story includes things like the extirpation of wolves in Ohio and the migration of coyotes across the Mississippi River and things. Um, so some of our newest specimens are amazing like that. And then some of our oldest specimens, um, we have a, a reindeer specimen from 1909 that tells similar kinds of stories. And so these specimens have, have both superficial beauty and interest, but also just really deep stories that tell us a lot about the past, the present, and the future. So those are two that come to mind, but uh, if, if you stop by the museum, uh, I'll bend your ear for as long as you uh, can stand to be here about all the cool stories contained in our objects. And uh, for me, thank you, Steve, that's great. Um, I, for me, the, the, I think the most, uh, my favorite objects, it's really hard to choose from the 17 and a half thousand objects in the art museum's collection. But my favorite is probably the largest of our objects and artworks, and that is the De Suvero for Kepler. It's the sculpture that you see out, out the front of our museum. It's the large red um, metal iron sculpture that has these big sort of I-beams, and it looks like a big burst of energy. So it, it was um, installed there in, and created in, in 1995. And it's red, it kind of, first of all, it signifies a sort of, in a way, a kind of connection to Miami. It's not intentional necessarily, but the big red sculpture kind of connects with the red um, branding of Miami University. So as you come into the campus, you see it. It's kind of a, a big burst of energy. It's got a connection to astronomy and the heavens and the stars. So it's like a burst, a cosmic burst. Uh, and I love that en energy and I love the impact that that sculpture has uh, bringing us, bringing people to our museum and to our sculpture park. One last, somebody was asking if we'll be posting a recording of this talk. Yes, it will be posted on our YouTube channel and that usually happens within a week after our noon time chatter sessions. Uh, and I don't see any other questions. So either of you have a a uh, question you want to add or an additional comment before we wrap up? I guess I just wanted to say, you know, I've always been passionate about museums. I think it's something I've been passionate about since I was a kid. And because I love that, that aspect of discovery, but also the public accessibility of museums, the fact that you can just walk into a museum and you, you have that instant connection with a collection or potentially with a program. Museums are important spaces where people can meet each other and connect with each other as well as learn. And I think that thinking about museums as social spaces is also a really important part of what we're all about. So museums have a lot of meaning for me personally. I think that um, I, I just wanted to convey my, my, just my, my passion for museums and and hope that if you if you haven't explored any of these other museums on campus, uh, that you you go out and check them out. Absolutely, museums are such an important space for society in general, uh, and mu Miami's museums are kind of uniquely accessible uh, in that they're open throughout the week, they're free, 
Uh, and many of the specimens are, are right there in front of you. There's not necessarily any barriers. And uh, if you want specific access to specimens, we bring them out to you. We have expert staff across the, the campus that can answer all of your questions. One of my favorite things, we, we have a sign at the front of the museum that says, Stump Steve, come on in and talk to us and bring in questions that might stump us. Uh, we're always looking for new ways to use our collections and we want to, to uh, show you the, the specimen that might become your favorite specimen. So we hope to see you at our museum sometime soon. That's great guys, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing all of you to join us for our next noontime chatter. Um, these happen the first Wednesday of each, each month at noon and you can check out uh, our website and the upcoming events for more opportunities. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you so much. It's been great. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. Bye.